Hey guys, it's Julian from Beneath the Bunk Studios and BeneathTheBunk.com. I hope you're doing wonderfully today. We are Beneath the Bunk, checking out the new and the free Supermassive plugin from Valhalla DSP. All right, so as you can see, we are in Cubase right now, and I have the Valhalla Supermassive plugin open on my screen. And uh, in the very short time that I've spent with it off camera, I could tell you that it's nuts. Um, and we're going to explain why uh, throughout the course of this video, obviously. So on what I have here on these tracks is a piano that I played through Keyscape, a guitar track that I played, miscellaneous like weird sounds that I made with my mouth, and uh, also just a vocal line that I sang. So enough talking, let's hear what this thing sounds like. So I'm gonna play the piano that I recorded earlier. But first I'm going to disable all the plugins that are on the track so you could hear what it sounded like originally. And it sounded like this. What I'm going to do is turn on all the plugins that I have here, including the reverb. That decay is just so nice. Um, so all I'm doing here is I have this billions and billions preset, which I'll explain um, in a second. I want to show you what I'm doing uh, in the post-processing world first. Um, I just have a little bit of uh, low end getting taken out, a little bit of low mids taken out. It was getting really muddy, and I just absolutely had to do that because it was pretty unbearable. Um, and then I also have the wall, which is a limiter to make it louder for you guys. Um, it's not really doing that much. It's just bringing up the volume. So we're going to go through the knobs on the plugin really quick, and I'm going to hover over it. And if you look below on the plugins GUI, you could see that each thing is getting explained. So if you don't like my explanation and you want to pause the video and read that, feel free to do it. I got my mix at 50%, which means we're hearing an equal amount of the wet signal on the dry signal. I got my width at 100, which means that it's about as wide as it could go in the stereo field. I also have my feedback knob at 75%. This is a preset, billions and billions, and this is the way it was set. And I kind of started learning how each of these controls work through this preset. Big thing that I discovered is that this feedback knob is kind of the most important knob on this thing because what happens when you have this really high is the plugin sounds like a reverb and when you have it on the lower side of things it sort of sounds like more like a delay so with it at 75 percent it sounds like this how you just heard it but if we clear uh, the reverb sound using the clear button right here which is very handy by the way <laughs> um, and we turn down the feedback knob and play it again you're going to notice that it sounds less like a reverb and more like a delay so let's check that out sounds more like a delay in that you can hear the individual reflections and it doesn't just sound like a ginormous room or stadium or whatever. Um, but anyway, we're going to turn that up back up to 75% so we can keep talking about the controls. The density is also super important in that it also makes it sound more like a reverb or a delay. So if we turn this down to 0%, it's going to sound even less like a reverb than it did when the feedback was at 15%. So let's check that out. The overall sound is much less smeared now, and you can actually hear the hammers hitting the strings on the piano. Um, so it's much, it's much different. Modulation uh, is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a uh, pitch modulation. So if we turn this all the way up to 100%, uh, just so you could really hear what it's doing, and turn up the rate, uh, you're going to really hear what's going on here. So it just makes it super wobbly if you get really carried away with it. And uh, it just, you know, adds this crazy otherworldliness that you would only really use with special effects. But regardless, it is definitely cool. And especially when you have it really low, it adds a nice little bit of movement that you don't really notice when it's there. But if you take it away, it definitely takes some of the life out of the sound. And then, of course, we have our low cut filter and we have our high cut filter, which I'm not engaging at all because I have the EQ on. So this warp knob is interesting. It's a little bit difficult to explain. So let's say uh, you have it set at 
That means that every delay that's coming after the original sound is the same length as the original sound. Once you start to change that, you start, it starts to act more like a granular synth in that it takes very short chunks of the original sound and starts using those to further delay the signal. this delay knob I would pretend that this says pre-delay because this is kind of what that is um, so if we crank it up to a super high value like I did and we press play we're gonna notice that it takes a really long time for the um, original signal to start sounding like it's being processed so let's hear that in other words it just takes a much longer time um, for the effect to get uh, kicked in. But if we turn delay all the way down, you're going to hear the effect right away uh, without any sort of pre-delay. Not only do you hear the effect kick in, the effect almost like completely changes, which is interesting. Um, it's a little bit strange. Not quite sure I understand why that is. Um, but that just goes to show you how diverse this plugin is because if you have it at zero milliseconds it almost sounds like a really janky chorus <laughs> but if you turn it up to 400 milliseconds like it was in the preset you're right back to your super ethereal reverb so that's interesting um, if we take this menu here and click on msec which is milliseconds obviously uh, we also have the option to change that to a note value which syncs up with your DAW tempo uh, to change it to a dotted note value or a triplet note value last thing we're going to talk about on the interface is the mode section so if you check that out you'll see that it's set to andromeda right now and if you change it to something else and then change it back i think that's a bug in the plugin um, it shows you what you currently have enabled so uh, we have long reverb slash repeating echo slash long delay slash slow attack so that's just the characteristics of the sound what we're going to do is we're going to change that to a couple other things so that we could hear how the mode is affected the sound and in order for us to do that I'm going to turn up the mix to 100% so the changes are extra obvious so starting in Andromeda we already heard that so I'm going to go to Gemini uh, which is single echoes and high density moving on to Hydra we have double echoes and long delay to Centaurus, we have repeating echoes that can become a longer reverb. And it's super cool because all of these do definitely sound different from one another. It makes it sound like I programmed a pad underneath it and I didn't. And that could in itself could save me so much time for when I want to do something like that. Um, anyway, we're going to move on to guitar, what it sounds like on guitar. So I have a nice low gain type tone uh, dialed in from STL Tone Hub. Um, I'm using the Chris Crummit one pack. And the Amsim on its own without any of the Valhalla stuff going on sounds like this. And with Valhalla sounds like this. So as we go here, you're going to notice that I am leaving the settings the same on each instrument. And the main reason I'm doing that is to show you that even with the same settings from instrument to instrument, this plugin sounds so different, uh, which is obvious because the sonic characteristics of an electric guitar versus a piano are super different to begin with. But that just sounds different to me. And it sounds like it's really driving home all of the possibilities that this plugin has. Something else that I really liked on this uh, on this guitar, and please excuse the crappy playing, I'm aware that it's definitely subpar, but uh, I liked the sound of driving the delay back and the feedback fairly low, um, and then having a really interesting chorusing sound um, on the guitar, and also turning up the mix a little bit. Let's hear that. <laughs>
I just love that. Moving on, we're going to look at the effects that I recorded. And by effects, I literally mean stuff like weird mouth sounds, like I said before, um, that I recorded with my mouth, obviously. So without the reverb and just totally dry, this first one sounds like this. Just me going. Uh, and then if we turn on the reverb and the limiter that I have on to make it a little bit louder. So insane. Makes no sense. So let's turn off these plugins again and listen to the next effect that I recorded. Nice, interesting impact sound that could be like maybe something cool for an outro, like right as the song ends, that sound plays. This one is a little bit modified after I recorded it. As I recorded it, it sounded like this. <laughs> and I also transposed it down 10 semitones. That was just a random number. Uh, and now it sounds like this. With the reverb, it sounds like this. Just a crazy big cinematic impact sub sound that I love. Um, and again, the main reason I'm not showing you the plugin anymore is because the settings are exactly the same um, from each instrument to instrument. Last thing, I did a really creepy sounding breath um, and it sounded like this. Last thing, uh, I sang a really simple vocal line um, and the only thing I have on the channel with the Valhalla plugin is autotune and then I have the same billions and billions preset that I had on the piano and guitar that I showed you. Um, so this is what it sounds like without the reverb. What does it sound like with the reverb? Let's find out. What it sounds like is angelic, ginormous, and uh, you can't even notice that it was a pretty bad performance and that I definitely should have done another take. That's all I got for today, guys. What's my final verdict on Supermassive by Valhalla DSP? Uh, it's that it's sick, it's that it's a no-brainer, and it's that you should definitely go to Valhalla's website and get it right now because you will not regret it and there's literally no reason not to. So if you enjoyed this video or if you didn't enjoy the video, let me know down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and all that good stuff, and I will talk to you later.